So we're now joined by Skip Lickfuss, the director of national teams and high performance for USA Lacrosse. Uh, Skip, it's been too long since we've had a chance to talk because it's been a while since we've had a big time USA Lacrosse event, but it's good to have everybody back in town this weekend, huh? Oh, 100 percent, Travis. Uh, we're, we're so pumped for what's ahead of us here over the next uh, several weeks uh, this weekend. Uh, kicking off a, a big uh, series of events for us, finally getting all of our uh, our, our athletes back in, in 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 town and and back together again on our field here at our headquarters, and uh, we're really excited. I I know you as the guy when it comes to any national teams. Like if I need anything, get ready for a USA Lacrosse event, I come to you. So I'm going to start with the national team uh, program uh, in in terms of what we're talking about here. And you've been part of USA Lacrosse and the evolution of these national teams for so many years. How have you seen things progress to where we are now when we're talking about world championships and sixes and, and when you first began it, as part of this program as just a player back in the day? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I hate to admit how long, far back that goes, quite honestly, Travis, but back to the 70s as a player, um, uh, we only had four teams in competition back in those days, you know, U.S., Canada, Australia, and England. So that was where it started. Uh, it's obviously grown tremendously over the last 40 years or so. Um, you know, what hasn't changed is our passion for it, our, our, um, our interest in, in uh, getting our, our best and finest out there, uh, and our preparation, and those things. We've, we've got better resources than we have had years ago. I, I remember very clearly the times where we had to you know, come out of our own pockets in terms of travel. Um, and nowadays we're able to uh, provide that for our athletes and we have uh, visions of doing even more for them in the years to come. You talk about uh, preparation and this is a busy year for you guys at USA Lacrosse. Not only are we talking about a women's world championships that USA Lacrosse is hosting in Towson, Maryland. You got a U21 team that finally gets a chance to compete in Ireland. You guys are looking ahead to the World Games in Birmingham where we'll really see sixes for the first time on a global stage. And then, of course, you got to get ready for 2023, the next men's world championships. How do you handle so much coming at you at one time after a year where we were supposed to have a bunch of stuff where we didn't have anything? Yeah, well, it's clearly been a challenge, you know, but we're, we're not the only ones challenged, and we try to take it from this perspective. You know, let's worry about what we can control. Let's be excited about still having opportunities, be grateful for still having the opportunities to be a part of this thing, and let's continue to, uh, to, to do the things for the right reasons, get the right people involved, and cherish the relationships that we're building with our, with not only with our, our players and our coaches, but also all the other constituencies that support us uh, in, in our endeavors to, you know, to, to, to field the best, uh, the best teams in the world. Have you guys tried to manage the schedule in terms of knowing uh, you've had kind of weird dates in terms of getting the women's national team together as you look ahead to next year, knowing that they kind of had some part of this process before the pandemic and then now a, a kind of a, a quick process here as you get ready for next summer? Well, you know, it's, it's really caused us to rethink our, our whole process in some ways because uh, of the pandemic and the fact that we started such a long time ago, it seems, that you've had the opportunity for some of these uh, women to develop uh, on, a, on a, long, a bigger basis or a faster basis over time, and, and that gap's closing between some of those younger players and some of the more veterans. And that, that exists at both the, with the men and with the women, and also with our U21 team. You know, uh, that, that extra gap in between has been a challenge for a lot of us. But now that we're where we are, it gives us the opportunity to reflect upon that and, and really take a look and see if our process continues to be the right way to go. And I think that as time continues to, to go by, as we've always endeavored to do, we'll continue to look at our process and, and revise it as, as needed to continue to grow and get to where we have to go. Finally, let's talk about sixes, because you, you mentioned the, the event next weekend there at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Maryland for, uh, for World Lacrosse, a sixes event involving some of the best teams in the world. You've been uh, an integral part of trying to, to put together what this sixes program is going to look like, because it's brand new for everybody, for coaches, players, organizers, everything. What have you started to learn about the game and, and what goes into this? Well, I think the first thing that, that I've, I learned from this process is uh, I think a lot of people jumped to a lot of conclusions at the outset. 
And I don't think that they were informed and I don't feel that they gave it a, a chance. But I think you're starting to see now, you know, based upon uh, various content, social media, uh, blogs, some of the things that you guys do in terms of interviewing some of the athletes, that the athletes themselves are completely enamored with this discipline. Um, I think that's, the, that's the, the best message I can bring forward right now. For our purposes for preparation, we got to figure it out. Um, there are obviously a lot of uh, similarities between uh, the sixes discipline and the, and the box game, uh, but that doesn't translate that well to the women. To, to an extent. So what we endeavored to do was for the first time ever, we brought together both our women's and, and men's uh, programs uh, for purposes of training a little bit this summer uh, on a couple of occasions. And it was an, a big hit. Uh, it was such a great interaction between the two and the opportunity to share ideas and to get a perspective on how things go and uh, watching the coaching staffs kind of get back and forth and try to strategize and figure some things out. It's really been a lot of fun to watch, and I'm really looking forward to how this develops as we go forward. You talk about strategy, and I've talked to uh, coaches for, for USA Lacrosse and then also across the world to people trying to figure out this game. What's it like to be part of these discussions of developing strategy for something no one has ever developed a strategy for? Like, it's a blank slate. Yeah, well, it's funny because the coaching staffs, you know, that we've had, the coaches that we've had involved to this point, you know, that's exactly how they've been approaching it. It's it's, it's almost like it is a completely blank slate. And uh, although there certainly are principles and, and basics that you, you can carry forward from one discipline to the other, the bottom line is there are nuances to this, rule sets, uh, you know, shot clock, the ball goes out of bounds, you don't get the ball back. You know, little things like that that are going to completely change the thinking. Do you go to the box strategy of, of taking a run in, go back, play D, come off, or do you substitute, you know, uh, uh, you know, in, in special situations, you know, in a certain way, uh, those types of strategies. Do you have offensive players or do you have mix in some defensive guys? You know, that, so all these things are what we're, we're struggling with right now, and these are things we're learning. And I think we're going to get a great deal of answers uh, from that uh, competition in a couple of weeks with the sixes because you've got the best of the year, Coy the best of, of uh, Canada and, and our guys. And I think uh, we're going to see a lot of things from that. Well, you guys certainly have a lot going on. We appreciate you taking a little bit of time. Skip to talk with us. Uh, good luck with everything, and we'll catch up again soon. We appreciate that, Travis. Thank you for all you guys do.